Pterodactyl here, and I want to talk to y'all today about a serious problem in this country, and that problem is lawnmower neglect and abuse. Every year, thousands and thousands of pieces of equipment are abused and neglected in this country. Just look at these mowers here that have been abused and neglected. 50 cents a day. You can sponsor a tractor like Joey here who'd been forced for five seasons to suck air through the same air filter. Like little Alfredo here, whose alcoholic owner sold parts off of him to feed his habit of alcoholism. What a shame. Grass bags, just lying here, forced to collect dust instead of grass. That's why your 50 cents a day is so important, to help lawnmowers like Andy here, whose owner starved him for fuel on a regular basis. Just 50 cents a day. The price of a dipstick O-ring tube gasket. You can sponsor one of these here pieces of lawn equipment, like Conrad here. For 50 cents a day, $15 a month, you'll get a picture of your piece of lawn equipment or garden tool and a handwritten letter explaining the neglect and abuse that they've gone through. Far more abuse is a serious problem. So please, please donate today. Help little Conrad out and join our YouTube channel and also Find us and like us on Facebook at Terrell Fixes All. Now there's your dinner for a neglected mower. Terrell Dactyl here, your advocate for lawnmower abuse and neglect. And today's video is going to be on basic lawnmower maintenance. We're going to show you what to do when you bring that mower out first of spring what you should do, and some tips on what you should do when you put it away for the end of the year. Like one thing you should do is, I'm sure if it's been sitting all winter, that battery is either dead or low. A good thing to do when you go to put the tractor away at the end of the year is either take the battery out, bring it in where it's warm, or disconnect the battery while it sits all winter, or Buy yourself one of these little battery maintainers that you can hook to the battery, keep it plugged in all winter so that way that battery is all full charge so when springtime comes you don't jump on tractor, hit the key and then clickety click, clickety click, won't start, what's the matter? Battery's dead, battery's dead. Another thing, make sure them, them cables is tight. They gotta be tight. Make sure them cables is tight. Tighten them up, ain't gonna hurt nothing. Don't crank them down too tight, but just tighten it up. And you're gonna wanna change the air cleaner. Now a lot of these tractors, disconnect the headlight, and you rock it a little bit. Looky there, hood comes right off. Husqvarna Craftsman has that a lot. Some other ones you have to actually unbolt the hood to get it off. But see, now I got the hood off, you can get to everything. Air cleaner, they all got an air cleaner on them. Find out where the air cleaner is on your model. On this one, it's right here. You're going to want to take that off, check the air cleaner, put a new air cleaner in it. I got some examples here of dirty air cleaners. Look, look at these here. See how dirty that one is? Just like in the beginning, little Joey forced to suck air through a dirty air filter. Look at this one here, see? You know what? How good would you breathe if I had my hands around your throat choking you? You wouldn't run very well, would you, if I was choking you? No. Same thing. Change the air filter. That's very important. A lawnmower engine like a vacuum cleaner, sucking in big amounts of air. You've got them blades on, big old fan blades, kicking up dirt and dust. Where do you think all that dirt and dust is going? It's going right here. Going right into this air filter. That's most important. 
new air filter every year. And another thing, if you've got these pre-filters, buy a couple extra ones. If you change this more often, this inner filter will stay cleaner longer. And then this thing costs more than this. So when you go to buy one of these and one of these, pick up two or three of these. Or take this off and clean it. Clean it in soapy dish water. Don't clean it in gasoline. Don't clean it with carb spray. Soap and water and then let it dry. But these are pretty inexpensive. You know, three, four dollars. You might want to just pick up two or three of them. Some of them you have to oil. Put oil on it. That way the dirt sticks to the, to the oil that's in there. And what we do here at the shop is we get a plastic baggie stick this in the plastic baggie, pour some oil in the baggie, and then squeeze it in the plastic bag. That way your hands don't get oil and dirty like this, and this stays nice and clean. Then pull it out, and if it's got too much oil on it, take some paper towels and squeeze the excess oil out on the paper towels, and then put it back on here. That's a good tip. All right, you're gonna wanna change the oil too. That's very important, that varies on uh, how much use you have, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 hours you're going to want to change the, the oil because this don't have speedometer on it, it ain't a car, it ain't got an odometer, 3,000 miles, hours. Now, this one's got an hour meter. So you're going to want to change the oil, there's a drain for this one to drain the oil, and there's the oil filter. So what we do is when we change oil, we get a new oil filter we write on it. You can write the date so you know when's the last time you changed it because you forget, you know, you forget, oh, I just changed that oil a little while ago. No. Date says you changed that in 2013. That's two years ago. So, or write the hours on it. Write the hours and the date. So that way you know exactly. Oh, okay, it's been 100 hours, so I need to change that oil. Or, Another thing, like we use here, this is kind of expensive, but you might want to get one if you change a lot of oil. This is an oil sucker. So what we do is we get the engine hot, because it comes out better when it's hot, and then we stick that tube down in there. We kind of give it an oil uh, colostomy, or, or whatever they call that. We just shove that down in there when it's hot, give it a couple pumps, it sucks the oil right out. We give it an oil colostomy. Here, gurgling, gurgle, gurgle. All right, let's look here at the dipstick of this oil here. Look. See, that's good clean oil there. You can see through it. Now, if you can see through the oil, then it's pretty clean. But if it's dirty black like that, that's bad. Another thing is if you run the motor and you see exhaust fumes coming out of here, that's a sign of a blown head gasket. So be aware of that. And another way to tell you got a blown head gasket is the oil's going to be real black and dirty, even after maybe you just changed it and don't even have 50 hours on it. That's because that carbon monoxide is mixing with the oil because the blown head gasket is forcing the, the smoke fumes inside the crankcase. And that's why when you pull this out, you're going to get a little bit of fumes out of there, but if you get a lot where it's just pouring out of there, you, got, you may have blown head gasket. So that's one thing to check. Change the fuel filter. Change that once a year. We use this pancake type one. That's non-directional. That one you can put on either way. Oh, and another thing about the oil. Everybody always asks, what oil should I use? Well, if you live in a warm climate, you can use 30 weight oil year round. Now, if you live somewhere where the temperature changes a lot, you might want to use a 10W30 if you're running the lawnmower uh, below 40 degrees. Because then if you got that 30 weight, it's going to be hard to crank because that oil is thick. It's a straight weight. But if you use 1030, that's a multi-weight. And always check the oil. Just get in the habit of every time before you jump on the lawnmower to go cut your grass, take a rag, check the oil. Because these things will use oil, especially if it's real, real hot out. It's going to burn oil. 
You don't want it to run out of oil. That's like you running out of blood. You ain't gonna run too good if you ain't got no blood in you. All right, now we're gonna talk about the blades and the belts a little bit, but the blades. This one's got a motion plug on here. So this guy's motion. He's motion. Now, the way a mulching mower works is, it only works good if you're only cutting off an inch of the grass at a time. If your grass is real tall and you got this mulching plug on, and you're going to go try to cut your grass, it's going to do a real crappy job on cutting the grass. And then all that grass, it ain't got nowhere to go, so it's going to get all clogged up underneath there. That's why it's only good if you cut an inch of grass off at a time. Now he's got the mulching blades on here, and these blades, zoom in on that cameraman, I hope you are, they're not that bad. Now, they make these blades, which in my opinion, these blades do a better job of mulching. See them teeth? They got tarot teeth on them. It'll chew up that grass. It cuts it, sends it through there, and cuts it up real fine. I actually like these blades and a lot of people like these blades. These are tarot teeth blades. Might want to buy some of these. And then here is an example of a wore out blade. Look at that. That blade may look good to you, don't look good to me. We have people bring them in, hey you sharpen that blade, I go that blade's wore out. Oh no, it's still good. I go no, that blade's wore out. See? Here's the exact same blade. Look. Looky here. See how much that's wore out? You need this sharp edge. And if you notice, this much of the blade is doing the cutting. Because look, this is still good right in here. So this is all that does the cutting is this much of the blade. Okay, the blades, they only go on one way. This is the way it goes on with the lift up. Again, paint pen, very valuable tool. You ain't got a paint pen, go get your wife's lipstick or something. Mark it. Take a paint pen, put an X on it. That way when you go to put it on, you know, okay, I can see the X. See, like this one, can you zoom in? It says grass side on it. Sometimes it says that. Ain't gonna cut too good if you got it on upside down. Believe me, I've seen them on upside down. Again, that's lawnmower abuse. You want it like this. Fan up. The lift up. So if you can see that X or you can see grass side, you know you got it on right. You can't see that. It's on upside down. There's a few different ways you can change the blades on the lawnmower. One way is you can jack it up if you got a floor jack. But if you're going to do that, you got to find a good solid point underneath the tractor to put it on. Now like on this one here, this tab here for the deck is a good solid point. So you want to find a good solid point. You don't want to jack it up underneath any of them steering rods or anything. You jack it up. And then always think about safety. Get some kind of jack stands or something to put up underneath there for safety. Something you can put, because you're going to be laying underneath there. You don't want that tractor to fall on top of you. You can get hurt. Another thing, always wear gloves. Wear some good, heavy gloves. You don't want to smash your hands or cut your fingers. Now here at the shop, we take the blades. We use an impact. But no, not a lot of people have an impact. So if you got to do it by hand, you want to get a good, long wrench. So you got leverage. Now, you could do this when it jacked up, or you could do it by taking the deck off, like we took the deck off here, and you can flip it upside down. Get a couple pieces of wood. Put your gloves on. And remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. There's not too many lawnmowers that have left-handed threads. They're all pretty much right-handed. You know, and then you're going to have to get down and get some leverage. See? And you can take it off. Make sure you get it nice and tight when you put it back on, too. Now, if you live in an area of the country where you got a lot of sand, that sand will wear these blades out like that. That's what happens when you're in sandy areas. It'll wear them out. 
And these blades, they go under a bunch of different names, but the most common is uh, gator blades. They call them gator blades. Not tarot blades. I call them tarot blades. But they're gator blades. And another thing, you want to keep the deck clean. Take a leaf blower. You got a leaf blower, air compressor. Keep that grass from accumulating under there. Because that's going to make it, you know, sticks and stuff get in there and that's what makes belts jump off. I've seen little bits of stick get wedged in the V of the pulley. And it'll make the deck shake. Another thing that'll make a deck shake is if you got a flat spot on, on the belt. And that's usually if you're trying to make the lawnmower do what it ain't supposed to do. Like if you're cutting real high grass and you're trying to go as fast as you can, that's bad. What that does is kind of slows the blades down from cutting, but the engine ain't going to slow down. It's going to keep spinning, and you're going to wear a flat spot on that belt. And every time that flat spot hits a pulley, it's going to make the deck shake. So if you got a shaking deck, chances are you got a flat spot on the belt. You need to pull that belt off and look. Oh yeah, looky here, flat spot. That's why it's shaking. Go up and get a new belt. And then now we're going to talk about part numbers so you can help the man at the lawnmower shop find your parts. All right, a lot of equipment now has stickers under the hood. You gotta lift the hood. And it's got the part numbers of a lot of the popular parts. Belts, air filters, blades. Write them down or take your smartphone, take a picture of it, take it to the place at the lawnmower shop. Help that man out at the lawnmower shop. He don't know what tractor you have. Oh, I need 42 inch blade for my 42 inch mower. What kind of mower you got, sir? Oh, I got an orange lawnmower. Well, that don't help me. You got a model number? Uh, orange, model, orange, I don't know. Part numbers, under here, look for them. Or if you have a book, or look under the seat. Here's where the model number is. It's not like a car where you go, oh, I got a 1984 Citation, it ain't like that. You gotta have all these numbers so they can find you the right parts. That's very important. Help the guy out at the counter. All right, now the model number for the engine is different than the model number from the tractor. It's not like your car where Chevy and Ford, they make the engine, they make the car. Lawn mowers, somebody makes the lawn mower like this one, Husqvarna. But Husqvarna don't make the engine, see? It's made by Kohler. So you need parts for the engine. You need to get that off the engine tag. And those numbers could be anywhere. They're all different places. On this one, it's right here. Some Briggs and Stratton, if it's an overhead valve motor, it's stamped in the valve cover. Or it's on this shroud, there's a tag, or there's little numbers stamped in there. You have to find them. Save yourself some time and trips back and forth and find these numbers and information. Hang on to your books and manuals. Write stuff down. Document everything. It all helps. Another thing you want to do is tire pressure. These things sit over the winter time. You can lose air in the tires. So you're going to want to go around check all the tire pressure. Not like Matthew out there who's owners for didn't put air in his tires. Poor little fella. 10 in the rear, 14 in the front. That's rule of thumb for most lawn tractors out there. Another thing, uneven tire pressure. On a zero turn, make it cut or drive funny and cut funny. You got funny cutting deck, could be tire pressure. Got low tire here, low tire there. It's going to sit to one side. Zero turn won't drive straight. First thing you're on check, tire pressure. So tire pressure is important. Check that too. All right, another thing to do is spark plug. Change the spark plug. You got a problem where the motor won't run? First thing you do, change the spark plug because that's real cheap and simple and you can eliminate that right away. Again, with the plugged air filter, not getting a lot of air, choking you out, you're getting less air, more fuel. So if the plug's black, that means it's running rich. Ain't getting enough air, getting more fuel than air, fouled out plug. Could be something as simple as that. So look at the plug. The plug will tell you. It tells a tale, the plug. You gotta be like a detective. Look at the plug. Oh look, it's all black and nasty looking. 
Yeah, probably dirty air filter. Put a new plug in it, only like two, three dollars. All right, you're gonna wanna grease it too. See, grease fitting there, grease fitting there. Some of these mowers have grease fittings on the spindles. Some are on top, some are underneath. You gotta get to them from underneath the lawnmower. You might have to scrape grass and stuff away, so do all that too. Clean the deck too, gotta keep the deck clean. If you got clumps of grass under there, get under there and clean it out. Again, wear gloves, use a scraper. Okay, I hope all, I hope all these little tips help you get ready for the season. Change the air filter, change the oil, fuel filter, blades. Check them belts, look for cracks and stuff in the belts and wear marks on the belts and hopefully, you know, charge the battery and all that. And hopefully you'll be ready for the season. Get out there and cut that grass. And shoo it up. Cut that grass. And there's your dinner on lawn tractor maintenance.